It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to start a new discussion, which is on receiver system. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on super hydrodite receiver. This will be the part one series discussion on receiver system. So stay tuned over here to receive more discussion or receiver system. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please continue to give me suggestion so that I can improve my standard of video. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. This diagram here shows both the transmitter and receiver system. Let's focus on the transmitter first. I'm not sure whether you still can recall on the modulation. This is what we call the modulating signal, intelligent signal or baseband signal. This is the signal that we want to send over to the receiver. For example, I want to send over my voice over to the receiver. This is the carrier. Again, like what I have mentioned early on, the carrier actually help to carry the modulating signal over to the receiver. This is what we call the modulation. There will be either amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, or phase modulation. At the output of the modulator, will be the modulated signal. This modulated signal is basically a combination of modulating signal plus the carrier. Either the amplitude, frequency, or phase change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. After the modulated signal will be the mixer. The key purpose of mixer is to move from low frequency to high frequency. With this mixer, we basically can avoid interference. After the mixer will be the amplifier. I guess by now you should know the role of amplifier. The amplifier actually boosts up the signal large enough before it is sent to the antenna for transmission. This is very essential because whether I will be able to receive at the receiver, I must ensure that this amplifier boosts up a certain level before it is sent to the transmitting antenna before it broadcasts to the receiver. At the transmitter antenna, this is the electrical signal. After the antenna, they will actually convert into electromagnetic wave. Remember, electromagnetic wave will be a suitable agent to transmit through the air. So with electromagnetic wave, they basically will propagate through the air and finally land onto the receiver antenna. The key purpose of the first stage of receiver antenna is to convert the electromagnetic wave back into the electrical signal again. Can you still recall why we need to have low noise amplifier at the first stage. Remember, we want to keep the noise ratio as low as possible. So therefore, in the first stage, we want to have low noise and also high gain. Hence, low noise amplifier will be a suitable block diagram at the first stage of the receiver. Remember, with low noise and high gain, I can actually achieve a lower, a lower overall noise ratio. After the signal is dosed up, it will pass to the mixer. The mixer in the receiver do the reverse row of the mixer at the transmitter. At the transmitter, it actually moves from low frequency to high frequency. But the mixer at the receiver will move the frequency from high frequency to low frequency. 
after the frequency has been moved to a lower frequency, it will went through the demodulator. Again, this is a reverse process of modulator. Whether is it AM, FM, or PM, it will recover back the original modulating signal. Before we actually can hear the modulating signal, I need to have an amplifier to boost up the signal large enough so that I can hear the voice. So this gives you some idea the overall transmitter and receiver system. Let's do a very quick discussion on wideband Armstrong FM transmitter. The indirect FM generation method is only able to create small frequency deviation. For example, they can create a deviation of 50 Hz up of 1 MHz. Hence, only narrow band FM can be achieved. To achieve the commercial wideband FM broadcast of 75 kHz for the frequency deviation, frequency multiplier are required. Okay, this diagram here shows the wideband Armstrong FM modulator. Can you see over here? This is what it means with frequency multiplier, a wideband FM can be created. So there are actually two frequency multiplier in this wideband Armstrong FM modulator. Next, let's concentrate on this superheterodyte receiver. The superheterodyte receiver is developed in the 1930s and can be used for both AM and FM receiver. Figure below show the block diagram of the super hydro receiver. Okay, you can see from here there are RF session, mixer session, IF session, detector session, and audio amplifier session. Okay, so on the next video, I'm going to explain in deep detail all the different sections. But at but for this particular video, let's continue on the discussion on super hydrotype receiver. A super hydrotype receiver, often shortened to superhead, is a type of radio receiver that uses frequency missing to convert a receiver signal to a fixed intermediate frequency IF, which can be more convenient process than the original carrier frequency. It was long believed to have been invented by U.S. engineer Edwin Armstrong. Okay, so this shows a picture of Edwin Armstrong. The diagram below shows the block diagram of a typical single conversion superhydrodite receiver. So how can I tell whether is it single, dual, or triple superhydrodite receiver? Over here, you can see that there is only one mixer. So therefore, I know that this is a single conversion superhydrodite receiver with only one single conversion. The board diagram of a typical superhydrodite receiver. The red part are those that handle the incoming radio frequency RF signal. Okay, so this portion here okay, is what we call the RF signal. The green parts that operate at the intermediate frequency. Okay, so this is what we call the intermediate frequency. Typically, okay, it actually has a lower frequency as compared to the RF. The blue part operate at the modulating frequency. Okay, so this is what we call the signal that we want to receive. The dotted line indicate that the local oscillator and RF filter must be tuned. Okay, so they must work hand in hand in order for us to receive the modulating signal. So this is what you mean over here. Next, okay, I'm going to share with you on the dual band super hydrotype receiver. Okay, if this is done with a single IF, there is a trade-off between low image response and selectivity. Okay, for example, if I only have one single super hydrate receiver, I can either choose either I want to have a low image response or I actually need to choose with a high selectivity. I can only choose either one. Okay, to overcome image response, some receivers use multiple success stage of frequency conversion and multiple IF of different values. 
A receiver with two frequency conversion and IF is called a dual conversion superhydrotype. And one with three IF is called a triple conversion superhydrotype. Okay, so let's take a look over here. Can you see this is the first mixer? This is the second mixer. So over here, we call this dual conversion superhydrotype receiver because there are actually two stages of conversion. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please try to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support.